Conspirators Network. I'm your host, Stephen McPherson. Doctor. <laughs> Come in, Stanley. Okay. Stanley needs his own team. Exactly. This <laughs> is Joe. 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 I'm Steve. <laughs> prayer. Let's invite the good spirits. Let's invite all the spirits there are responsible for this work, the Spiritism Network, this meeting we have here every Tuesday. Let's invite the good spirits to inspire us to be a little bit more receptive with our minds and hearts open. Unveiling the natural world, the spirit world, it is not an easy task for us. Beings that are so attached to the matter to our material body. Help us, good spirits, to understand the message here tonight and to involve Steve. And may he bring to us explanations and a good conversation here among friends and the spiritual family. I'm sure they are here with us tonight. Thank you for your support. Stay with us tonight. And so be it. So be it. I'm going to say a prayer for you guys, too. Whoever about to happen. <laughs> so, so, all right. Welcome, everybody. And uh, we are continuing our discussion on Alan Kardec's book, What is Spiritism? Um, the secret hidden Alan Kardec book. So you said online that would be start on the 20th? 22. But, oh, the 22, Cause, okay. Because last week we were talking about 20 and 21, and I had more topics that we could have discussed on 20 and 21. Okay. But I was like, let's, let's keep, kind of keep moving with this. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'm like really happy to just like have you guys like talk about something and fill up all the time. You know, you know it makes my job easy. But also, like, it's not just about that, too. Like, sometimes I feel like, oh, we need to kind of keep it rolling. So, I don't know, somewhere in between those two that we uh, try to find out of okay. find ourselves. So, uh, we're in Chapter 2, which is Elementary Notions of Spiritism. And um, we're on the third heading, which is Communications with the Invisible World. So this is item 22 for all of those following along at home. <laughs> all of you. Um, so uh, now we were just getting through some of the elementary. You know, this is this is elementary notions of spiritism. This is chapter, and we just got through the part about concerning spirits, which is a lot about basically. It's it's a lot like the. Um, Alan Kardec's Fundamentals of Spiritism from the Introduction to the Spirits book. Um, so once we get into this section, um, we're talking really more about mediumship um, in, in a way. Um, oh. So Alan Kardec, he, he poses a you know, rhetorical question in the, first, in the first line of this thing. Um, he says, having accepted the existence, survival, an individuality of the soul. I mean, and that's kind of saying that we've all accepted that. Um, spiritism is left to answer one principal question. Are communications between souls and the living possible? Um, so what, what do you guys think about that? Absolutely. Experience. 
Yes, absolutely. Possible. I try not to think about it. Well, I try to experience it. And your experience says what? That there is a, uh, a soul that is uh, survives this body. That who I am is my soul. And can communicate with the people that are alive? It communicates with me. It can't. So there are there. Let's forget about you uh, for a second. Is it possible that there are other spirits that communicate with other people? From what I have read, it's so, but it has not been in my experience. Of course, you cannot experience my experience. Yes, I believe so. You just, what? You just blew my mind. I believe I was, so. I just had a flashback of being John Malkovich when I go through the little, little portal and go into the brain. <laughs> and the experience was like to be, you know. Oh yeah, John I've Malkovich. seen this movie. I love this movie. <laughs> what is that, John Malkovich? Yeah, oh, John I Malkovich love this movie. movie. Yeah. This is amazing. I saw that movie. Yeah. Anyways, but let's hear many <laughs> and Joe. No, I mean, uh, I agree. It's absolutely possible. It's one of those things, if you had asked me about it like 10 years ago, I would have been like, you guys are all crazy. But until uh -huh. I had my own experience with it, where it just, it's just simple things like, think, you think of somebody who's not here, and you get like a good feeling about it, you know, and, and just like, because I'm not really necessarily a medium, and you know, like, like I don't do writing or, you know, well, maybe not yet, you know, who knows, who knows, but I'm just saying at this point in time, like, I, I haven't experienced that. But I have experienced like the the effects of like just the feeling of knowing like you know somebody is kind of here alongside me, helping me out, you know, in certain ways. Being sensitive, mm -hmm. extra sensitive, and and the uh, the power of, of prayer and of good thoughts, and you know, I, I've experienced that. Um, you know, and with with spiritism, I might call it different things than I used to call it. I used to pray to the angels, like to come help me, but it always seemed like when I would pray, I would get the help that I that I needed. You know, not necessarily the help I wanted, but you know, um, <laughs> it's always it's always there. You know? <laughs> like it's, there's, there's always assistance there when we ask for it, um, in one in one way or another. You know, whether it's just some good fluids, like kind of coming along, good feelings, uh, reassurance, or, uh, mm -hmm. consolation. Um, mm -hmm. What about Joe and Hua? Huh. I had experience when I was 16. <clears throat> um, I think I've always been, for lack of a better word, extra sensitive, experienced things. Um, especially recently in the past year and a half, two years, um, having an awakening, experiencing something that I still don't quite put finger on during a meditation, um, closest thing I can say we have body, mm -hmm. but then shortly after that, witnessing miracles and being sensitive to things happening around me and being able to be connected with someone even though you're across the state, um, there's more to it than what we understand in normal theology or science that has not been explored in I'm really excited to see how that gets tapped into and played out. I think the spiritist philosophy has kind of brought me here. I do. Um, you do? Yes. Possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes to the question. Um, Have you seen it? No. Of, co of course you do, many times. Not me. I've no, no. It. Have you seen it? The communication yes, between. But I haven't experienced it myself. But have you seen it? Someone doing it? I have, but it's somebody else. So you know, who knows? But do you think it's? Do you believe? I do. Okay. I do, and I, I've seen it, but I haven't experienced it myself. Uh, but I don't need to. I. There's no doubt. 
my mind about that, and there's no doubt in my mind that um, yeah. there are many things that I can't um, experience because I haven't developed the senses for them, and that there are many others that I can't even understand or begin to understand mm. and are as real or more real than the ones that seem real to me. And I don't doubt that. Can I embarrass you just a little bit? I so, I can you? Can I? So we went to Spain for the first time, and Juan was introducing myself as to his father. So we uh, we stayed in uh, his uh, his old bedroom in Valencia, in Spain, and every night the family was coming to talk to me through dreams and telling me stuff that he nobody told me about the family and one particular uh, was his your aunt your aunt your, his aunt and she was showing me the way she died her entire bedroom details of the bedroom how she, what she was wearing and and they were gossiping about the family this the, was the dream yeah, there was a dream. So I woke up in the middle of the night and said, Juan, this whole family is coming and talking to me. This, 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 this. He goes like, ah, oh, I stop it now, I can't sleep. He was, he was scared because I was saying exactly, exactly, like everything correctly, like spot on. And the spirit of the family were talking to me and they were talking like gossiping about each other. Like if I, like, do I care who are you talking about? But it was funny because uh, it was nothing, one thing that I, that they missed. All the communication was clear. And I, I, I was telling him everything and he was confirming every single thing. Even the house that she died, it was not there, that house. It was another house in another city far from there. And I was telling all the the painting on top of her head in the bedroom that she died everything he was like no and he was then, scared and the neighbors a different day it was the neighbors of the building where we were that's true so yeah. we're about the i don't even don't remember the, the neighbor downstairs and yeah. you can't stay at my place <laughs> so. but that's true i sleep in people's house and sometimes i go I go, if someone sleeps in my house, when they leave their body, I go with them, I follow them. And then in the morning, I tell and they confirm. I said, what was your dream? And then I start telling the details about their dream and they go like, you were with me? I said, yeah, I was. I hope I don't have a naked in the but anyways, but, it's funny. I mean, and, and kind of like what Juan said, I mean, I, I'm projecting here maybe, but that I, I never like heard things myself from spirits or saw things, but like I went to different groups and saw channeling, you know, which um, opened my eyes to a lot of things that like led me to spiritism. Um, so in that, in that sense, um, it led me to believe that the communication with the spirits was possible because because of what I saw, you know, because you, you, you get certain confirmations. But I, at the same time, I saw a lot of errors, but it, it did lead me to look for look for something else. You yeah. know? So so if we can all like if we're all here and we all agree that communication with spirits is possible, you know, then we can continue. To we can continue. We're all, we're, <laughs> Twenty-three. Then we're, then we're all basically spirits. Yeah, because if you do not believe in this, that's not a place for you. But that's so true. Yeah, I mean, it's like if you if you're curious about it or, or whatever, but yeah. but you know it. it even the That's curiosity, true. it's like, what, like the, next thing, the next thing that Alan Carr talks about, um, you know, once we realize or, or we accept that the exchange between the visible and invisible worlds is possible, um, it's, it's an established fact, um, a whole new field opens up to observation and is the key to a multitude of problems. So I thought that was interesting. So what problems mm -hmm. does this solve? Mm -hmm. You know, 
Because I don't know if I had any problems before I came to Spiritism. I'm a Spiritist and I got problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, well, there's one big problem that Spiritism seems to solve, and somebody really believes in it, but that's the fear of death disappears. Mm -hmm. the, the, the idea of... Uh, you know, I disagree with that very much. I know tons of Brazilians that are very much afraid of death. Just because they're Brazilian, you know, mean by that. No, no, not just, only Brazilians. I don't understand what you disagree with. There are spiritists that have been in spiritism for a long time and they fear death. Well, they fear what's going to happen to them as a, they uh, fear as death. a discarnate spirit. They, they not they, only fear death, they fear spirits which is even worse. They are in mediumistic meetings and they fear spirits. I'm like, well, so you fear me because yeah, I am a spirit. I, I, would, uh, <laughs> I, I, would, I would go along with that because if I had a paid conscience and then I was afraid what's going to happen to me after I died, and even if I believed in spirits, so then I would fear death. Yeah, I could understand that. Story of my life. <laughs> I would, I would, that makes sense to me. But then not not no, but in not only by the fact that you uh, study spiritism or you get to learn spiritism will get rid of your fear of death. I'm talking personally. I understand, but that's not for everybody. Okay. Yeah. So everybody else talking about your problem. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of problems. Yeah, I say a key because he says it's a key to a multi multitude of problems. Absolutely. Um, I open my eyes and I remember that I am a spiritist, that I want to be a better person than yesterday. Then I cannot just go to my old habits and keep my old habits knowing what I know right now. I know better. So I can't um, ignore irritation. I can't ignore um, <clears throat> judgment. I can't ignore those things that I know are harmful for my soul, that create diseases in my mind and my heart. Cannot ignore that anymore. So it's a lot of problem because I still enjoy those kind of, those kind of things. Because they are still uh, the reminiscences of that habit it's echoing in my heart i want to i want to go to the old habits but cannot so what happens i suffer because i want those old habits no i should not i should move on i should transcend i should become a better person have, how can you be happy with that every day i had a friend that was talking about <laughs> gossip and he was <gasps> saying like oh i'm like i want to gossip because it's just like a pig <laughs> rolling around in its own pieces, you know? Like, yeah. He didn't say that word, but don't say that word. <laughs> he says, you know, because it's it's warm and it's gooey and it's comfortable. I love that. But at the end day, you still love smell it. like pig feces. I love that. So, it's so true. So, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a real thing. I, I'll, I don't know. It's like, in, for me too, like I'm going through it. Like that's one of the hardest things to let go of because it seems so innocent like to just like spread a little gossip like oh they'll never find out <laughs> but, but yeah you know, absolutely Alan Kardec says um, about spiritism it is a powerful I'm uh, sorry not necessarily about spiritism about communication when we when we um, open up the possibility of communication with spirits mm -hmm. it is a powerful moralizing element mm -hmm. since it puts an end to any doubts regarding the future. Yeah, yeah there you go. So that's what, what, what you were talking about. And that's why I say, it, it, you know, what other problems does spiritism solve, like just by its very nature? It is like exercising. If you don't feel any pain, if you don't feel any muscle, you're not exercising, exercising correctly. It's the same thing in spiritism. If you don't feel any struggle within, if that thing will don't shake you the basis of your uh, beliefs and thoughts, you're not doing right. 
It got to bring you a problem and trouble. It has to. Otherwise, is the it's what the the most powerful force we have the human being has it's something called i don't know how to say in english hold on homeostasis you know what homeostasis is I've heard of it. okay homeostasis is that your body is always looking forward to be the same if when you when, when if this room gets hot what happens you sweat do you desire to be sweat do you want the sweat no your body gets sweating the same thing is when you feel cold you shiver right do you want to do that no it's your body working to go back to normal Pull, pulling us to go back to normal so if we are doing something different our whole system will like no stay right here be quiet don't do anything so you stay the same so can you imagine the trouble of our system is created to make us be a, safe alive healthy so that's why this power when i want to change is pulling me back it's like don't don't go and try don't look for trouble stay right here that's all my senses can you imagine this this is a, this is very powerful and that's why spiritism it's so important to me it sounds like it's not really the key to the multitude of problems it's actually the problem that <laughs> you know i think i agree with kardec here I think it is the key to multiple problems. Um, one, for me, one of them is the answer or the beginning to the answer of the purpose uh, of life, for my life, for my connection. And, and that's, that's an oh. immense oh, yeah. uh, problem for which I saw another one. as a key. Um, for those people who, who for whom they have this problem, it, it is definitely, I think, the key to that problem. It, it's never been for me, um, meaning that I, I was never afraid of death, but, um, but nevertheless, it's, it's a key to understanding uh, what's going to happen and, and how approximately it's going to happen or, um, or how my um, my actions or inactions will affect that transition uh, and, and whatever comes after. But but mainly um, my mainly the, the purpose of life and the priorities um, and, and getting answers to dilemmas as to what to do in a certain moment or how to do it. Or which choices to make. Um, all those things can be, for me, answered through the life of spiritism, and that's the key to solving huge problems. Mm, nice. I agree with both you guys. Um, I see it as a little bigger picture, though. I think that. Spiritism, the, the ability and the knowledge, and groups of people who are trying to communicate, um, along with like meditation, how you receive messages when you do connect with your higher self. I think that this kind of ties in, and what draws me to this is spreading that message and that knowledge, and sharing it with people, and hmm. raising global consciousness and vibration. I think it's mm -hmm. something that's going to lead into that help uniting people in the world. And sorry if I sound like a bit of an idealist. But mm -hmm. No, beautifully that. said. No. That's true. Alright, um, So, as 
far as you guys are concerned, um, has knowledge of the future life, you know, that we're talking about, that we're saying death isn't really the end, has that knowledge changed the way you're living your life today? Let's hear from Ron or something. Right? Manny, for example. <laughs> The only Brazilian. <laughs> Can't get nothing past her. <laughs> um, from for me, uh, it's kind of it's kind of what you guys were kind of talking about just just now. Um, just um, just kind of acknowledging the fact of uh, you know an afterlife or you know uh, you know. The, your spirit, you know, after you pass, uh, that you live on, and you, you, you know, will probably be reincarnated to fix your problems. It's, it's, you know, it's, um, it's hard to, it's hard to accept that. You know, it's hard to, to change right away. But, you know, slowly, you know, you start to realize that how insignificant, you know, some of the things that you do are. Like when somebody, mm. when you, you know, when someone seems to do something, you know bad towards you and, and you want to get angry or you want to retaliate you you realize how small like that mm. that act is and how you know how insignificant it is and you realize how much bigger it would be to you know just to you know move on from that and, and learn from it and you know just try to be a better person and hopefully that person or whatever happened will you know hopefully they'll yeah. you know that would help them to acknowledge you know their their wrongs as well so for me that's been the biggest thing is just Trying to trying to to look at my actions and trying to just be a better better person. Oh. Yeah, you can't you can't like do anything <laughs> like once you have like a little bit of like, knowledge of this, like everything like is back on the table, like and you, you have to examine like every single thing in life. And even yeah, even like the guy at work who's like saying stuff about me. Like, you know, and like, like, you know, I can't, you, it's like, you, you could, I mean, I could go and like do, like, retaliate against that too. And it's like, you know, and, and the, the, the way the, the world is, it's like, you feel a little funny actually, like, standing down. Because even though, like, people say, oh, the bigger man backs down and all this kind of stuff, like, we all know, like, <laughs> it's... That, that the, the way the world looks at it, you know, especially mm. if you watch these movies and TV and stuff, you know, uh, that's not like the message that we're seeing if we're like Fast and Furious fans or anything like that, you know, like these popular type of movies, like nobody's backing down from fights and stuff like that. Mm. You know? um, <laughs> yeah, but it's it's like, it's it's funny because it's like we're, we're, we have our eyes on the future life and it's, it's, it's kind of funny, like, that you don't, I feel like I don't fit into the world sometimes. But then again, it's like I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to uh, like take myself out of the world. I, I used to actually like have a great desire to like join a monastery and like get away from the world and like just sit and meditate and like much um, easier. Huh? Contemplate life, you know. It's, a, it's like something I really wanted to do. Easy that. I, I even tried to Google, you know, monasteries to try easier. to find one. <laughs> you know, like it's really. They don't have a lot of websites for monasteries. <laughs> Blue pill. You know? I don't see it there. I know. But but yeah, and I I read in the spirits book about like about a life of, of isolation, like living a life of isolation. They said it's twice as selfish. And I was like, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because you only have yourself to worry about. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and, uh, mm. and so yeah. so it makes me look like look at things differently. So now I'm like, well, I, I gotta like like dive into this world head on head on and like just be with the people and yeah. like stand in line at Publix and bump elbows with everybody mm -hmm. and, and you know like the movie wait said line, yeah. wait in line for gas yeah. <laughs> like the movie said we can't handle the truth we can't our pride is too high something like that <laughs> something like that that was <laughs> There was, a, there was a few good men. A few good men? Yeah. Oh, yeah, a few good men. Tom, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise? Yeah, he was in that. Keeper Sutherland. Demi Moore. Really? Was, uh, I think you the right movie. Jack, yeah, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Kevin Bacon was in it. A few good men or something. 
A few good men, yeah. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say, but I don't want to scare you guys. I can handle the truth. I can't handle the illusion. Good for you. Good for you. It made me think of a, another problem solved for a kid by um, spiritism. And that's judging. My tendency to judge people and situations, it gets um, diffused by the knowledge that I really lack all the information about uh, the situation. So when I think I know about the situation, because you know, it's very clear, it's in front of me, and I, therefore I can judge, uh, I really don't. There's, there's so much behind a person, situation, um, that I don't know uh, mm. about the evolution of that person, about the, the the moment of that evolution and why is it conditioned or, 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 or what? Is and I, I go a little beyond that point. Mm -hmm. I go to the point that when you start applying in your life those uh, moral teachings and you start to feel better with yourself, then you have the evidence. But then you are not 100% there because you still have your old habits, right? And it's hard to break a habit, and, and I know about this because I, I, I do coaching. And now you have the evidence of how, is, how do you feel when you are in tune with your higher self and when you're still doing those old habits. And now you can compare the energy that flows in your body, the good feeling and the other one so this is another key factor when you already felt you tasted how is to live in in a high and elevated thoughts and elevated emotions so even harder when you taste it because you know once you know you can't unknow it that's true <laughs> yeah, I feel too like the, the judgment. What I, what I just wanted to say was that I, I go through it too. Like I had um, when I was practicing like this meditation that I got, and and the guy was talking about like just being aware of when you have judgment and you just label it like oh that's judgment. You know you can say okay and that that thought that popped up that's anger. So I take that I can like sort of label it and then I can observe it. I don't have to be in it like, but with the judgment like so. For some time, I had like a little bit of experience, like seeing judgment or, or whatnot. But like after reading and practicing Spiritism, it's taken on a new level where where I see it and I go like, like oh like you know when I see somebody doing something and, and maybe they're doing something to me that I don't like, but then I'll say like well I can't really put myself in their shoes, you know I kind of have like a script I kind of go through like you know especially like the guy at work who gets on my case I go. Well, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. You know? <laughs> Even if with Trump, uh, before Trump was elected, I used to retweet some um, laughable like cartoons or stuff about uh, Donald Trump. And then uh, when he was elected, then he became the president. And I stopped completely because to me that it's not correct. I, he was elected and I shall support him and pray for him and, uh, and just send the best thoughts I have that he is a, a good, a good uh, uh, chief of executive. That's a good point. If more people spent time trying to send positive light to him mm. instead of bashing him. And the same thing goes for any other president. Absolutely. Yeah. There's the other side that just... Yeah. Every time you go on Facebook, there's always somebody like hammering, mm. and it's right. part of why you never go on Facebook because it's always there's always all this negative stuff. And if people put out uh, the energy into being more positive and trying yeah. to send. Yeah, I I don't I just don't agree with that. Uh, that you have someone that is now officially in that position 
and I keep I keep that. making exactly to, that's what I do. exactly. <clears throat> I mean, we're all, like, if we're here in the United States, like, we're all kind of, like, on this ship, so you're going to sink the ship because of the guy? Like, exactly. Go down. Exactly. You know, so, so uh, exactly. there's an old Chinese proverb that says, water can float a boat, but it can also make it sink. <laughs> water can float the boat, but also can make it sink. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Right here, because right I... in the fortune cookie. <laughs> so, so after we're talking about um, spiritism as a powerful moralizing element, putting the end any doubts regarding the future, um, um, then we, when we go on, we're, you know, Alan Carr has continued to just talk about communication with spirits, um, and what he says is that in many people's minds, what sheds doubt on the possibility of communicating with the dead is the mistaken idea regarding the state of the soul after death. Um, Where is that? That's 24? 20, 23. 23. Okay. And this this really, I mean, I when I read this, because I, I reread it last night too, trying to prepare for today, mm -hmm. and um, I was thinking about, like, before I found spiritism, I had no concept of what a spirit is or a soul or anything, like, and the people that would give me their idea about it like it was even, it was kind of like Alan Carr says, like a will o' wisp or something like that. He says that a lot in, in here, or like a vapor, or you know, it just said like the, it was very um, abstract, right? You know, like right, a, right. Like a like a painting by like a Pollock or whatever, you know, just like <laughs> it's like the, as best as we could do. And, yeah, true. And eight, with eight grams. <laughs> eight grams. What is that? Supposedly that's how much the soul weighs. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. That's science. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, but, you know, I mean, we have a lot of... I, I, want, I mean, I would, I would venture to say a lot. I, mean, I know I'm not alone that other people are like me and just don't really know, like, what does a soul, like, look like or, or you know... What is you know to have a, a picture of it? But spiritism gives us a really clear picture of it, even though it's still a little bit, you know, they still say things like we we can't really quite grasp it, but here's some terms that you could mm, <laughs> kind of understand. Mm, mm. Um, well, I, I guess I was going to ask like, what's your idea of what the soul is after death? Same as before. Uh, what do you mean, same as before? I mean, the soul, whatever it is, it's the same before and after. Uh, it's expressed maybe differently or attached to a different matter, uh, but still the same thing. It has to be the same thing. It can't be a different thing. Not unless it's become more enlightened in whatever existence it was during that. Time. And then by knowledge you learn. I, I can understand that it may have, uh, because of the matter uh, attached to it, it may have different uh, abilities, but it has, to me, it has to be the same. That's my idea. It can't be anything different. So your soul. You do believe reincarnation, but the soul doesn't learn anything or not learn anything to ascend to a higher level? Not because of the fact that it's been sent or, or that it's, you know, making the, the passage. It, I mean, our, I think my spirit is getting experience every, at every moment. Right. Uh, but it's not like I'm going to hit a jackpot when I die or anything like that. Or become a saint or mm -hmm. it, it's going to be me one minute later or an hour later I mean same right. thing like, I basically the same thing I mean, think like, oh yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I see what you're saying like yeah. just just like there's a lot of a lot of people like spiritualists have this idea that when we shed our body that our soul or our spirit like 
has like infinite knowledge and everything. Right, right. And it's just our body that's like keeping us away from from seeing that, and then like we'll have that perfection. And that was a story that I got a lot from these these channeling groups. Mm -hmm. You know, that would just do channeling, and like whoever was coming to the channel yeah. must know everything because you know. Right. They, they would exactly. Say that because they went out. Make because joins got John joins the source again and then knows everything. Mm -hmm. so, which just sounded like a great story too. Right. And you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to say this the wrong way, but there's like there's like a little bit of not, like a little bit of truth to it. Like not not that there, but uh, you know, they say like when we shed our body, that the spirit has like all of its senses back again. You know, so there's like a little bit of Some. of truth. Yeah, well, you know, it, it like like it's um, like a, a fruit ridding some of its husk. You know, right. like but like some a, they lose. Like for example, some people they are very selfish, and it's in heaven and hell. You will see that there is a category of very harden, hardening, hardening spirits. Very selfish people, they become blind. Sometimes they become blind and death, death because they were only concerned about themselves. They didn't care about anyone else. They didn't have any consideration for others. Only their, their own opinion mattered. And when they get out of the body, they lose some sense. But like they become the blind. Like they, they, they become in darkness. When yeah. You know, um, he he started to feel his pain on a whole mm -hmm. new level. Like the, That's you know, true. That he probably never really quite, from I mean, from what I understand, he never really quite got with it. Like during his existence, when he was you know yeah. alive, but, uh, I mean incarnated. Sorry, mm -hmm. that that when he died, because he had committed unconscious suicide. He said, "No, I didn't. You know, I didn't, I didn't mm -hmm. commit suicide. I, I yeah. died of a you know whatever cirrhosis or whatever was going cancer." Yeah, cancer. cancer got it. Uh, you, you're right, he didn't, but he had the ability to get in contact with that, and he could have, he could have done, he could have uh, reached that knowledge, uh, or that, not knowledge, that awareness. Because he, he was, was a doctor, yeah. He could have done that. Uh -huh. I mean, we all can do yeah. that. Um, also, the, this, the, the, the people that commit suicide, the accounts that... We we get the communication from the spirits. There there are wonderful books, the memoirs of a suicide. It's an amazing book. It's as scary as, it's really scary, <laughs> but it's an amazing book. And you got that book, right? It's in my library. That is a book. Will you will change forever? So, uh, the people that commit suicide, and you have this category over there too. Yeah. They remember their the the brief second of the death over and over again, nonstop for years. Not everybody is the same. Okay, this is not a like a cookie cutter kind of thing. Everybody is different. We have different. We have done different things in our lives. But it's uh, the the amount of suffering. The people that suffer suffering the most are the people that commit suicide. They have no idea that they are trying to get away from their pain. And they are creating a pain in like in a level that is, it's horrible. My friend used to tell me suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. But knowing about the afterlife, I say, well, it's not really permanent, is it? You know, it's permanent for enough <laughs> for, for us, you know, oh my on, gosh. on this planet. Yeah. But, but, you know... And, and what we're really talking about in, in item 23 is um, the idea of, of the para-spirit. Because that was something that spiritism talked about that I never mm -hmm. heard of anywhere else. And it was really kind of easy for me no, to get... No? Never heard of astral body? Well, I never heard of para-spirit. But it, I never heard it, like, described quite so... Oh, okay. Um, quite, yeah. quite the way it is no. in spiritism. No the way. astral body, like, you can do all kinds of... You can fly around, like, you can close your eyes and you can go visit your friend in New Zealand. You know, it's like, you get all kinds of different stories right. with right. the astral body. Right, You know, and a lot of people put their own spin on it, but, I mean, Alan Kardec is, as far as I know, the only one who uses the spirit. And, You're right. And describes it, like... 
describes it as somebody that they know who who died and visited as a spirit and still like wore his same jacket and he had his still his pipe and his glasses and his snuff box and all that stuff like all funny stuff like when you read that like like definitely from from that time <laughs> you know um, but that, that idea sort of changed the way um, changed my concept of, of the afterlife just that that idea that they're a spirit I'm st it's still something I guess I I'm like learning and grasping but uh The idea that um, that the spirit itself, well, I'm sorry, like I guess it would be the soul, you know, has this paraspirit, which is I kind of think of it like sort of like a like a spacesuit almost, <laughs> you know, like it's it's like it's like it, it allows the the, the the soul to kind of move around in that environment. But I guess this body would be more like the spacesuit. You know, it's kind of I guess. It, It's not it's not matter like this matter, but it, it is actually a type of matter. Well, it's, it's, it's perhaps denser than your uh, pure spirit, and uh, less dense than but it's much less dense. Yeah, than yeah. Than what we would call imponderable. But still, it? still matter. It's still matter, but it's less dense. Mm -hmm. Thoughts of things also. Say a thought is matter also, but it's certainly less dense than a uh, than a spirit, a soul. A very spirit. A very spirit. You know, it's first time. Yeah, it, I don't know when he starts talking about it, but he's definitely in the spirits book. You know, it's in the spirits book. Get, yeah. It. It in the spirits book, it talks all the details about soul, a very spirit, and matter. And it's only like just a convenient term that Alan Kardec used because he was he was talking about I guess he had studied botany or something. Like that. Yeah, he was biology. About huh? How a, a seed, like a plant seed, has a parasite. Yeah, major, I guess, in biology. That guy had a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> Do you don't have TV or internet. <laughs> we have all this access to information and how little we know. Exactly. I mean, I should speak for myself. Exactly. <laughs> um, in item 24, uh, Kardec starts to talk about how the visible and invisible world um, are incessantly reacting on each other. Um, since there are human beings, there are spirits too. And if the spirits have the ability to manifest themselves, um, they must have done so in all ages and amongst all cultures. Um, so, this, is, this isn't something too crazy for us we're sitting here to think that you know there's a spirit sitting here and like we were influencing each other one way or another mm. um, waiting for us outside how, I mean how many people those that don't agree with our what we are doing here are waiting for us outside true some of us are waiting in here for yeah. I mean, spirits are waiting for us outside. Yeah, because they don't agree what we are doing here. So when we get out outside, they just hold hands with us and say, let's go to our old habits. Okay. <laughs> That's what the spirits, they tell us in the book, Missionaries of the Light. I was talking about this in my last talk, public meeting. In Portuguese or English? Both. Both. I was talking Spanish. exactly about this. How we have... Tons of spirits. Andrea Luis describes the tons of spirits that are waiting outside because they don't come in here. They're just waiting for us outside. That's why the, tra the inner transformation is so it's crucial for us. Because if we don't change, we will keep the same habits, we will keep the same lengths of energy. Yeah, sometimes I want to blame my, my obsessor spirits for the things I'm doing. Uh-huh. I can't do that, you know. Does they're, it work? They're there to help me, like, you know, 
know, always there to help me stick to my bad habits whenever I want to, but it's like it's up to me to, to change it. I can't like and that's why that's why we talk about how you're mentioning how spiritists sometimes are afraid of death or or don't change themselves. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have like a little bit of knowledge about spiritism and it's kind of dangerous because then we can make excuses for our actions. And oh the spirits made me do it. It doesn't <laughs> it's work. It's like it's like no you didn't you didn't you didn't, you know, you didn't finish the chapter. You just read the first sentence. You know. <laughs> exactly. You didn't, you didn't, and the, yeah. the last chapter will say, you have the last word. Um, it's up to us to make the effort. Exactly. To, uh, and, and, and all it takes is like a little bit of effort. Exactly. You know, it's like, that's all. A little bit. That's all you're saying. Like just a little bit of effort. And, yeah. And we can, we can change our, our, our habits. So like, a lot like said, intention, if you want to manifest something, if you don't mm. have to work behind it. Exactly. Okay. You gotta align, get in tune with what you want, your desire, put your mind and your soul and your heart in one thing. Yeah? So, yeah. Well, it's um, it's 8.53. Right? I, was, I don't know where the time went tonight. It seemed like... Oh. Really? <laughs> yeah. We got some so, good questions, so... That was... <laughs> did we? Like, well, we so started 24. Kind of, yeah. So we stopped at 24, right? Okay. Yeah. 24 is a good one, though. It's a very good one. I'm going to pick up on 24 next, if, we, if we're alive next week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we, we were going to cancel our workshop, I mean, our study group next week for, um, what's his name? Sergio. Uh -huh. But um, unfortunately, they had to cancel. Yeah. You know, the, no. All the work we we're going to do. So. So unfortunate. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen with the weather and everything, but I, I guess. Wait, we're no, but the doomsday is the twenty third, so we will be here next probably, week. Yeah, okay. Probably. Of that's the new that's the new thing, right? The twenty third is gonna be some kind of weird alignment in <laughs> the sky. Yeah. I saw twenty third coming as a new start, new beginning, the start of the end. That's that's what the twenty third is. That's what we said. The start of the end? It was a Jim Carrey movie, too. Well, the start of the end. We saw the beginning, the number 23. Uh, you have seen the number 23 everywhere. I thought it was a terrible movie. But, well, I, I mean, haven't actually, seen I just thought the movie. premise was terrible. I haven't seen this movie. You haven't missed anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as far as announcements goes, I hope the world you know, is still turning <laughs> next week. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, we are going to be here tomorrow, so they had um, canceled our meetup tomorrow because Sergio is not going to be here, but we are actually going to be here, it's just that Sergio is not going to be here. Um, so somebody's giving a lecture on something. Yeah. That's that's as much as I know. Who's giving the lecture tomorrow? Don't know. We don't know. When is the but tomorrow? it's not going to be the, it's not going to be Sergio. It's not going to be the physician that we're coming from Brazil that was coming. I told them that they needed me to give seven days of workshops. I, I know a lot of stuff. I could, right? You know. I what did they say? I knowledge. They said thanks with no thanks. Actually, they didn't even say anything. They just, just, Is he your friend? You brought me, him here? Yeah. <laughs> they gave me a dumb look. He lost his, he lost his, uh, his speaking rights. Because <laughs> he was playing foul language video clips. Was I? <laughs> I you said that. I heard, man. You I said I that. I edited bad words out. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so and I gave another speech after that too, so I can't say. <laughs> um so do you want to end for tonight or, or what? Or do you want to do your thing? I wanna do my thing? Yeah. Do your thing. We still oh, our thing. thing. My Sorry. thing. What do you mean yeah, my do thing? thing? Do your thing because, no. because no. We, if I do my thing you, you get all scared and you get out of here in a second. <laughs> you see that it's your thing now. Spirit's book. All right. Okay, let's do it. And it's got a rainbow on it too. So. Okay. We. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. It's okay. We don't get to see it often because I always take all the time. But. <laughs> no, that's pretty. Really, I like that. So we are we are still in chapter three, and I don't know for you guys, but I am always always. No exception. I am always excited to read this book and talk about Spirit's book 
because just because it's an amazing book so now we have read the creation of the worlds creation of living beings population of the earth we spoke about Adam and now we're gonna read the diversity of the human race okay I'm gonna read it slowly we are not in a hurry and we we this is for us to walk together on this okay and uh, ask any questions you, you what, guys like what about what, what question are, 52 52 just so and I, I just ask to keep it with the with the the topic that we are around the topic just because we have so much more to to talk still you see a lot to talk so you will come the time will come that we will reach the, those questions too okay what causes the physical and moral differences in the diversity of the human race on earth again what causes the physical and moral differences in the diversity of the human race on earth i want your guys answer whatever you think it doesn't have to be this what do you think what do you feel nature, nurture, um, programming, family, economical, social, all the factors, spiritual. Okay. The, the physical has to do with the environment that was there before. For the people who were there, consequently they had to adapt to that environment, consequently there were differences. I think, I think that's what Kardec says. I know what the Spirit said in the book. We will see, we will read. For now, I would like to have your own insight. My insight? Yes, about this, your own opinion. We will read the, the, the answer from the spirits, but right now I'm trying to, to feel what you guys think. Sounds fine to me. Okay, good. No problem with that. It feels good. Good. I, I don't understand how, what he's saying, if somebody's born of a certain race, they're going to have certain moral tendencies. I don't understand. That no, I didn't make, say that. Just said that sense. why there are differences morally and physically speaking. That's yeah. all Kardec is asking. Right. It's saying why is there difference? Why, why are we different? Why diversity? Yeah, but it's kind of, it's almost sounds like he's saying that because people are, are born differently and look differently, they have different morals because of that. What the causes of physical and moral differences in the in the diversity of human race. Just in the diversity of human race. Not not linking race with the moral diversity just why is it that we are different in the in this whole planet why is it what uh, makes sense to you well i read the answer so i'm just gonna make up a different one of my own oh yeah yeah um because i agree with the answer but um i'm thinking that free will is something that has uh, to do with it and also the fact that we um, we are attracted to each other by uh, our frequency or symphony or I don't remember the word in English affinity affinity thank you by our affinity um, not simply in the most um, way which is the one happening say in this room right now which is clear we are all attracted by the spirits book um, so we're here discussing about it that's our affinity in this moment but also uh, at a much higher level um, as we choose where to incarnate uh, and with whom we we do that 
in uh, through through or considering that that affinity that um, together with the free will I think it through time through uh, centuries and millennia it creates groups of different people with uh, or diverse people with diverse uh, physical traits and uh, moral traits as well. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Yeah. Next. So many. No, I, I, after I after I said that, I kind of I kind of answered my own my own question because uh -huh. um, it uh, I kind of I remember something that I read before, and it's um it has to do with uh, with like racism. But racism mm -hmm. is um is is it's like it's a natural instinct that people have because it's a survival instinct. Because mm. if let's say you're an animal and you saw somebody that looked kind of like you, like they had four legs and they had mm. a tail, but like it was, it, mm. and you're you're a deer. And that's you know like a lion that you're looking at or or mm. or, or whatever like a panther, mm -hmm. and he's like oh he looks just like me he has two ears he has two eyes it's the mm -hmm. same color as me he has a tail he has four legs he has a mouth I'm gonna mm -hmm. go hang out with him, but then he attacks me right mm -hmm. so it's like it's a survival mechanism something looks different than you so if, if I see more deer I'm gonna go hang out with more deer I'm not gonna go hang out with the other ones mm -hmm. so it's kind of like the same thing with race and color like you know, see take away race and take away everything you know and you're let's say you're a white person and you have a group of white people here and a group of black people here, you're most more likely going to tend to, you know, gravitate towards the group of white people because they look like you. So you automatically have an idea saying these people are good and the people over there, well, I'm not so sure about the people because they don't look like me. So that's kind of where I think, like, the basis of racism comes from. It's just, you know, it's not necessarily like they're bad, it's just you don't know, so you don't really associate mm -hmm. with those people. So you kind of, like, you fill in the gaps with ideas, and you hang out with your own group, and those people over there, you know, you don't really know what they're doing. But, but it's an inherent, it's an inherent instinct that we have. It's a survival mechanism to help us, help us survive. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. Steve, who else? Who else is left? We're talking about diversity. Of diversity of, of moral. Physical and moral. Yeah. And why? Yeah. Why is there diversity? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, before I found spiritism, I was taught in school about the multiple origins theory, that there was three um, races that populated the planet, you know, that like the Asian race, the Caucasian race, and the you know, African race, basically. That, and that was the theory that, that these three different races populated the, the planet. but. They didn't really know why there was three and how they got where they were, you know. So it didn't really, it didn't really completely fill in the story. But that was kind of like, so just kind of like from from being taught that you, you go, okay, well, they kind of just were in different places at different times and progressed at different rates, you know. And then uh, my Qigong master, <laughs> Dr. Yang, said that um, because of the magnetic field of the Earth, that the people who live on the Northern Hemisphere, are, are their brains are more um, stimulated. So that's why the Europeans were developed like more intelligence. Then the people on the Southern Hemisphere had more energy in their reproductive organs. So that's what they did. <laughs> and, and, you know, and so that made sense to me too, you know, the magnetic field of the earth. Mm -hmm. It's like that's science. <laughs> it is it is so fascinating that it is hard to be simple, huh? Yeah, I mean this we just don't really know. So we've tried to come up with some kind of answer. Okay. So the spirit you are you guys are too advanced for the spirits here. The spirits gave a more simple answer. They said climate, lifestyle and habits. The same differences are produced in two children born to the same mother, but raised apart from one another, under different conditions, bear no moral resemblance to each other. Now, you are going to 
something else. This book I recommend to you. Let me show you. It's very cheap in Amazon and you can read in Kindle. It's Kindle it's uh it's a free app, right? So this book right here on the way to the light. Oh my gosh, can show you the oh, cover. You know, I, I even had it, we were talking about it last week, but I haven't I haven't read it yet. On the way I wanna see the cover. I wanna see its cover. This is the one on the way to the light with the spirit of Emmanuel. Emmanuel was one of the it was uh, Chico Xavier's mentor, a spiritual mentor. He was a very, very intelligent spirit. And over there, you will understand how the earth was populated. So people came from different planets and they brought their habits. Right? The Egyptian, they brought the knowledge of mediumship. The, the Jews, they brought the knowledge of religion. The, the Hindus, the spiritual knowledge, so on and so forth. So every, do you know the spirits there are more from earth? Is in that book. You know which one? Guess, guess, just for fun. Guess what, what, race. what country, what race? No, what country, not what race, what country? Brazil. Huh? Brazil. No. I haven't gotten that far to the read something mentioned about um, Egypt. No. India? No. Okay. <laughs> what country is more from the earth? Yeah, there are spirits the there they are more they old here here and and it started here, not created here, but started here. The Aborigines from Russia. Ooh. Chinese. The Chinese. You know what's interesting is is that, um, in my my Qigong you know video series I was watching, he had a, a diagram and it was a Chinese diagram of the body um, and the energy pathways, and it was all mm -hmm. these different symbols in it. Like there's and there's different things like all throughout. Yeah, you know, they show the, mm -hmm. like a, an ocean of chi and, a, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Near the heart, there's two children playing, and there's the uh, the Big Dipper. And he says that's because um, they believe that that the people came from the stars, you know. And, and it, it was interesting when I heard it. But now that being a spiritist, you're like, well, they really did, you know. <laughs> and and the Chinese, like, yeah. And they, and this is just all through their experience, yeah. and The knowledge they, you know. Most civilizations they all know they know this, and also the ones that are, they are in deepest troubles in this book and the way to the light is the Europeans. But I'm not going to tell you why. You have to read the book. The linear, rational people, the Europeans, they are the ones that are hardest to let go. Those Northern Hemisphere people, like you were saying. Thank you. Yeah. Th thank you. <laughs> That's why I'm moving forward. I love you, Manny. China thank you, Manny. China's in the Northern Hemisphere. China's in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. Well, oh, but the yeah. Europeans are there. And Steve was saying that they are elevated, whatever. I didn't say that that was true. I just said I'm that. I'm heard that. So I'm just Steve's totally right. Come on. <laughs> that's why they... And, and he's like... That's why they put me in charge of these, these workshops. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Do not help him. <laughs> Encourage him. He speaks about your do not, right. <laughs> do not help him, okay? He doesn't need any help. Okay. So, as simple as that. So climate, lifestyle, but of course, the spirits, Alan Kardec was saying that this should be reviewed by serious spiritists each 20 years. Did we do that? No. No, no we didn't do that. But now there are a lot of uh, uh, physicians, neuroscientists, they are working on this knowledge. And making this knowledge science bringing this to science so there are a lot of people working on that right now so let's keep hoping that this will keep moving on because it, not, it does not supposed to be here just for us to sit down and talk about it 
it's supposed to do something in our lives, to change our lives, right? 53. Was humankind born at various points around the planet? What do you guys think? Was humankind born at various points around the planet? And don't read the answer. <laughs> what do you guys think? No, yes. What do you think? Independently? Well, yeah. Yeah, it says various, yeah. points. various points. So, yeah, yeah it'd be so yeah. What do you think? We can say whatever we want. Yeah, I don't think a switch was flipped from all center of humans here. But <laughs> between, like you were saying, the Chinese and uh, what would that be termed? Star seeding? Is that mm. the term for it? Um, Stargating. <laughs> well, that, that could be used too. Same. same <laughs> Same end result. Same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, because different cultures are older, for sure. And it's funny how the old civilization, they all have the same thing, right? Uh, some kind of sign that they were in contact with some kind of astronaut, some kind of right. man from the stars. It's amazing. <laughs> what, what do you think, Manny? Were you kind of talking about, like, an asteroid or something like hitting Earth and then depositing something and then like originating that way? Is that what you're alluding to? No, um, but that is one possibility for sure. Um, star seeding by other races influencing or bringing life here or influencing existing life here. Um, kind of like Stargate or like every religion has its own theory about where life came from or started, including even indigenous tribes or indigenous people, um, Aboriginal people, they believe that they came from the stars. I haven't thought about it much, but I, when I do think about it, I, uh, I, I kind of feel that it's part of evolution Sitchin's uh, uh, the twelfth planet, mm -hmm. which is belly that this thing with September twenty third seems to be involved with that. That the planet Nibiru, mm. which is a thirty six hundred year uh, mm. trip around the sun, uh, is is coming into our area and it's creating the uh, what they suspect is going to be. I really don't know. There's just there's so many theories and possibilities out there. I, I do not have the answers. Um, hmm. Who wants to? Well, those things when I think about it, like it makes my brain want to explode. And like you know, <laughs> trying to figure out. Yeah. You know, like, I, I mean, I know what I've read in the book and stuff, but before that, it's like when you start to, like when they told me in school that there was three different main races. It's like, well, how did they get there? You know, like what came before that? Right. It's like, well, they must have came from somewhere. It couldn't have come from nowhere. Right. You know, I'm yeah. just kind of like, you kind of go, okay, maybe, maybe it was God, or maybe it was chaos. You know, I don't know. You just kind of like, don't know. And I, I think even like the spirits don't really tell us like the full story. They always say like, you know, it's not for you to know, or you know, with your instruments, you won't be able to really tell. But you know, they give us a little bit here or there. Right. What? Uh, I like the. Uh, the switch analogy, uh, and I, actually I do think that's the way it happened, like click the switch and we were here many, many, you know, long time ago, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, either by that transport um, and, you know, in a very rudimentary 
state of knowledge we were placed here um, and we had to you know make our way to where we are now uh, which is still not very advanced but it's way more advanced than, than what it was uh, or by um, I don't know this is something I, I always thought it was a possibility uh, by an infusion of the spirit the soul on a uh, specific species, which would be in this case the Homo sapiens. Uh, you know, at some point, uh, one was born with an attached uh, soul, the way we we have it today, um, or you know, at the, at the evolution stage that we are. But I don't know those things. I watched something here at night. Um, that it was it suggested that the human species was actually designed to be able to carry that attached soul mm -hmm. to ex have that ex the experiences that we have and learn what we learn Interesting. in this lifetime. Um, um, I really don't know, I have the answers, yeah. but it seemed interesting and it definitely like, caught my attention Interesting. that yeah. we were genetically modified or designed by God, Creator, aliens, whoever mm -hmm. you want to mm -hmm. placate to. Uh -huh. that we do have this innate ability where either we perceive that our soul is separate and can mm -hmm. move on as the spirit is believed, mm -hmm. um, or we have a choice not to believe that. Um, there was the three mm -hmm. definitions of soul that were in the mm -hmm. book that I covered a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I do, I do see that though. Mm -hmm. that, that's the way I always imagined it. Um, but now, if anybody's interested in these topics. Uh, I'm reading the, the books, uh, I'm reading in Portuguese, but I think they are in English, the uh, Hobson. No, they're, they're not. not. They're not? No. They going to be it's mind-blowing. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, actually, it was not channeled because the guy, the guy Robinson Pinheiro, just uh, got out of his body and uh, the spirit was using his body while he was astral projection projection and it was cr uh, writing the whole book it is channeled but it's in, like in a deeper level <coughs> of channeling because he was totally out of the body which is his books are the, the amazing he explains these things in detail which huh. of course you can you know, take your not but hopefully he comes uh, back soon and things about and everything so it was amazing the it's, experience it's that mind-blowing for me what was the author's name? Uh, what was the author's name? I'm sorry. Robson Pinheiro. Oh. The, the, we have the books here, oh, okay. uh, but in Portuguese. Right. But I'll show it's you. all in Portuguese. Well, it would have been nice. We did, we did not translate. He offered us the, the, the copyrights of the book, but it was kind of expensive, and that's why we did not translate. Unfortunately. But in the future, uh, hopefully, if we if we have a study group here and then from the next step would be with the people that are interested in this really interested in this uh, study will become uh, will go to a medium mystic meeting and we will have our own group of, uh, of uh, mediums channeling writing talking but first we need to have people that are interested so the question people. about that so the answer is was uh, humankind born at various points around the planet yes and at various times this one this one of the causes of, of th this is one of the causes of diversity in a human race the earliest people is spread out across different climates and combined with other races which formed new ethnic groups and this is according with science right so Kardec was not happy with it, that answer and he goes on and makes a uh, 53a asking do these different constitute different species do these differences constitute different species 
And then the spirits answered, Of course not. All of these different people are a single family. Do you do the differences between the varieties of the same fruit stop them from being the same species? Okay, got it? The species is like a man-made term, too. I mean, it, it, it helps That's us true. classify That's true. animals, but if, if we wanted to say there were different species, I mean, I, I don't know, I was just kind of thinking. Well, same thing for inalienable right, inalienable rights. It's kind of it's human. Mm -hmm. Convention. Yeah. The, so it's good that the spirits said no and didn't like get into a thing about what's the species anyway. You know, it's it's better for them to say like that we're all a family instead of trying to get into like semantics about that word. Yes, yeah, because mm -hmm. that word, if we if we had said like, well, yeah, they're slightly different. You know, then that would just help us like put a barrier between us and, and them. And today's last question and answer. And then we finish the diversity of human race. Yes. 54. If the human species cannot be traced back to a single ancestor, should humans stop regarding one another as brothers and sisters? Again. If the human species cannot be traced back to a single ancestor, should humans stop regarding one another as brothers and sisters? And the spirits answer, answered, Under God, all human beings are brothers and sisters, animated by a spirit and having the same goal. The human mind is inclined to, to interpret world's words literally. Okay. Under God, all human beings are brothers and sisters, animated by a spirit and having the same goal, which is. What is our goal? To progress. Yes. Evolve. Evolution. Evolution. The human mind is inclined to interpret words literally. And that's why when I agree with the spirits, because every time someone asks us a question and me included, we try to elaborate this most in intrinsic, difficult type of answer. And we, I don't know why we have this tendency to complicate everything, but that's the way we are and we will accept ourselves as we are. Any comments about the diversity of human race? Any, if, if you disagree, if you agree, or if you have something to add? Our diversity is our strength. Fortune cookie? Yeah. I agree with the cookie. I agree with the trust it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, that's relevant to today's, you know, world because we're spiritists, and of course, we accept all this stuff, and we're so enlightened. But we can definitely see and watch the news that other people are having a hard time Absolutely. understanding this. We're fighting between countries, fighting inside our country. Absolutely. You know, like civil war going on in Syria. You know, I, I pay attention to some of this stuff. You know, Me too. Uh, people, you know, the differences in classes between people. The government in Venezuela thinking that they can keep all the resources for themselves and yeah. while people are in poverty, you know, exactly. and all these things. Well you know, said. When we go back to, like what we're talking about in the, what is spiritism too, you know, the knowledge of the future life and, and the powerful moralizing element, you know, we won't be able to accept, <laughs> accept these things. Well said, yes. And this is, this is all, I think, to me, personally speaking, all the questions here, they are so important for us. We have to uh, start move, moving on uh, and not just wait for people to bring us answers and not wait just for the scientists to give us answers and we need to start start our discussion 
because if we are only waiting on someone that means that we are pushing our responsibility of everything to someone so we should take responsibility because this is one family this is the planetary family <coughs> and we are all like children of the source of God of whatever name you want to call we are all children of this beautiful creation and we are no better than anyone or worse than anyone and we all want to to love and live a happy life so until we stop ignoring the fact that we are a family and we should get together and unite our our personal gifts to help each other we are going nowhere and helping each other also means that ah I'm just gonna wait for the the scientists when they find out about the origin of the world and how everything is started then yeah then okay so then we are always giving the responsibility and waiting on, on, on people's shoulders and finding an excuse to at least discuss you know brainstorming about those kind of things they are important to us we must be proactive I believe so I believe so to be a passenger is yeah. selfish. Exactly. Kind of what we were talking about earlier about exactly ascension. Yeah. Or being stagnant, repeating the same thing exactly. cycle after cycle. Exactly. Homeostasis. Exactly. That too. <laughs> I'm gonna be here. I'm not gonna move. Let many moves, and I'll wait for him until he comes. That's why I'm here on this planet to disrupt everybody's homeostasis. I'm just here. I'm, just, I'm helping everybody. Rock in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> just don't tip it over. I was not the one that asked for Steve in my life. <laughs> Law of attraction. Water all floaters sink either way. <laughs> Maybe he's one of your uh, guardian angels here. <laughs> here to, to teach Who's? you something. Yours? Uh, yours? Yeah, all of us. Mine? They <laughs> not. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, 9.30. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm, go I'm going to do the final prayer. Really? Okay. You did the, fir the first one. Um, Go I'm going to do a short one. Very short one. I'm going to pray next week. Okay, you will. <laughs> it's a quick one. Let's all meet at the level of the heart where our true treasure is our knowledge our experiences our love our compassion our kindness and let's be thankful for all the knowledge that are available for us in this planet let's be thankful for all the books that we have read that are helping us in this enlightenment path, path uh, no, I don't know the word, the whole path, enlightened path, and let's be thankful that we are here together discussing about very important topics regarding, regarding our life, the beginning of the world, and all the civilizations our brothers and sisters in the universe and I'm sure there are other groups just like this one so we want to connect to the love and compassion and friendship and respect that we have for each other uniting our hopes and our intention to be a better person tomorrow than we were today and today than we were yesterday. May the good spirits that are responsible for this group stay with us, inspiring us to keep going, keep researching and keep learning so we can better help our other brothers and sisters. 
May you receive well and go home in peace. Thank you and so be it. So be it.